understanding guitar intonation and how to set the intonation on your guitar correctly. As with many English words, there's two definitions for the word intonation. One of them is to do with the expression, but the one we're dealing with is to do with the internal tuning of the guitar. And this is when, even when the guitar's in tune, it goes out of tune up the neck. In other words, the frets can go out of tune. So then, the symptoms of poorly adjusted intonation is when the guitar goes out of tune when you're playing it fretted. Even when the open strings are in tune, the further you get up the neck, the more out of tune the guitar will get. There are lots of reasons why the intonation on a guitar should go out, but here are some of the more common ones you'll come across. The first one is retuning your guitar to alternative tuning. This means you're changing the standard tuning to a deeper or higher one, for example D tuning or C tuning. When you do this, you're changing the tension of the strings, and when you change the tensions on the strings, you can radically change the dynamics of the guitar, causing bad intonation. So, if you're planning to permanently or semi-permanently change the tuning of the guitar, it's well worth checking the intonation and adjusting it accordingly. Changing the gauge of the strings on your guitar can also have an effect on intonation. However, most of the time you can get away with this one. But it's worth checking the intonation every time you change gauges, just to be sure. Some older style guitars, and especially archtop ones, have bridges and saddles that can be moved, and these often get knocked and send the intonation right out. Because of this, these need to be checked and adjusted quite frequently. Also, older guitars in general need to be checked and adjusted. Over a period of time, the intonation will slowly drift out, and therefore they do need to be checked and possibly adjusted. Finally, quite commonly, brand new guitars need to be adjusted, because they've either not been set up at all in the factory, or they've just been set up badly. So, once you've got the gauge of strings on you want, and you've got the guitar the way you want it, check the intonation as a final check, and then you'll know it's good to go. You can see from this list, basically, it's worth just checking your intonation every now and again to make sure it's staying where it should be. Right, let's have a look at how to test your intonation and check it's accurate. In order to check your intonation, the first thing you need to do is tune your guitar. Preferably with either an electronic tuner or an application on your phone to make sure it's bang on. And take your time over it and make sure it really is as in tune as you can get it. For the sake of this video, I'll be using standard concert tuning, that is E, A, D, G, B, E. Once you're sure your guitar's in tune, you want to check the tuning at the 12th fret. Now, if you're doing a proper check of your intonation, you want to do it again with the digital tuner to check it's bang on accurate. However, if you're just doing a quick check of your intonation and you're reasonably confident, you can do this next bit by ear. So, simply put, in order to check the intonation, we check the open string and then we check the tuning at the 12th fret and we see if there's any difference. Obviously, if it's out of tune at the 12th fret, the intonation needs adjusting. Thank you. 
you can see here there's a slight difference in the B. Right, by revisiting the B string we can confirm here that there is a bit of a difference, it is a little sharp and it does need adjusting. I noticed that the open bottom E string was out of tune, so first I'll retune that and then recheck it. As you can see here, the bottom E string also needs a little bit of adjustment as it's a little bit flat. It's worth pointing out here to watch out you don't bend the string, because if you bend the string even the slightest bit, you'll warp your results and therefore you'll end up adjusting what doesn't need to be adjusted. There is an alternative way of checking the tuning on your 12th fret and that is possibly to use a technique you've not looked at before and that's a natural harmonic. To produce a natural harmonic you literally touch the string very lightly so you don't even bend the string over the 12th fret, not in the gap but directly over the fret and then pluck the string and pull your finger away as you pluck the string. If you get it correct, you'll hear the note ringing even though you haven't got your finger on the fret. This will almost certainly take some practice because you need to touch the string so lightly and then it has to be directly above that 12th fret in order to make it sound at all. So if it doesn't sound first time, don't worry, just keep practicing it. The great advantage of the 12th fret harmonic is that it doesn't rely on the frets to get its pitch and therefore it will always be bang on in tune an octave above the open string. Therefore to check the fretted notes on the 12th fret you can compare them with the harmonic on the 12th fret. So go through each string playing the 12th fret harmonic and then the fretted note and you should be able to hear the difference and if your guitar needs the intonation adjusting. Before we go on to adjusting your intonation, it's worth pointing out that, unless it's really serious, there's no need to adjust it. Also, if you're an absolute beginner, it's probably better to leave it alone at the moment. Uh, one reason is that your ear won't be tuned in yet to the guitar, and another reason is you only really hear intonation problems when you get further up the neck. And when you first start on the guitar, theoretically you should spend most of your time below the fifth fret. If your guitar has a movable bridge, and if your intonation is desperately out, the first thing you need to do is check the position of the bridge. Now, this is a useful bit of information for everyone, even if the bridge isn't movable on your guitar. The distance between the nut and the 12th fret should be identical as the distance from the 12th fret to the bridge. So, if you've got a measure on there, you should find, certainly within a few millimetres, that the distance between the nut and the 12th fret is equal to the distance from the 12th fret to the bridge. And if it isn't, and you've got a moving bridge, then slide it along until it's in the position it should be. Let's now have a look at a typical bridge setup, so you can see what parts you need to be aware of in order to adjust the intonation. At this point we're still using a Fender Stratocaster style bridge, which is a pretty typical one. But also, this style of guitar has elements that are common to most other guitars, so it's easy for you to take from this what you need to do to your own guitar. 
Right, if we look at this bridge, you'll notice the saddles where the strings sit and the screws that can be used to adjust them. You'll also notice the spring to keep them tensioned. And it's pretty much common sense to realise that if you screw the screws in clockwise, you'll be shortening the string. And if you screw the screws outwards anti-clockwise, you'll be lengthening the string. And this is how we adjust the intonation. Here's a pretty random selection of various bridges. So you can see that all the elements we've described are on each one of them. Even though they may be slightly different, they all have the same purpose. You can see the blade of the bridge and you can see the adjustment screw in order to move that backwards and forwards. So you can adjust the intonation. Here you can see that these elements are common to even the archtop style bridge that can be moved. You can see it's got the blade where the string rests and it's got the screw to adjust the intonation. And this is because once you've slidden the bridge into the correct position, you can do all the fine adjustments with the screw. To summarise why your guitar needs these adjustments, if your guitar string is too short, the guitar will be sharp at the 12th fret. And if the string is too long, it will be flat at the 12th fret. This is even if it's in tune at the open string, the frets will actually be out of tune. So each string has to be the correct length. Right, so let's see the intonation being adjusted on an actual guitar. I'm going to use here a Squire Fender Telecaster style guitar. And that's because it's nice and easy and clear to see on the camera what I'm doing with this guitar. It's also worth pointing out that for this demonstration I used a guitar tuner app on my tablet so that you could see it on camera. However, I had real problems with this, probably because of the microphone in the tablet. And I could only actually find one app that could hear the guitar being played at the 12th fret. And that was Pro Guitar Tuner. I'm sure you'd have more success with this with a better phone or tablet. However, it is important that the tuner you choose is stable, clear and accurate. So I'll just double check the tuning quickly. Close enough. A little flat. There you go. enough. There you go. There we go. Starting with the bottom E string. So we'll try play the bottom E string and then play the 12th fret. And you can see there that's or in here that's considerably sharp now remember what we said earlier this moving forward would make it sharper so this going backwards which is in effect is making the string longer this will flatten it so we're going to flatten it however there's something to watch when you tuning this way and that is the string go sharp so if you tighten it too quickly too much you could break the string. I'll just demonstrate that. Yeah. 
still a little sharp but not much so we'll just uh, screw this again it's going clockwise move it just a little bit further back check again again this has gone sharp because I've screwed it in down and then take it a reasonable distance in. So here we go. Right. close enough that's pretty much bang on so we'll move on to the next string I think that's pretty much bang on as well so next string tiniest bit flat that one is so with it being flat that means the strings too long so we need to uh, shorten the string so we'll shorten the string here going anti-clockwise it's only a tiny bit so close enough but I'm going to take it in a tiny bit more anyway as I'm quite fussy up there. is saying it's in tune but to my ear that's a tiny bit sharp I don't know what you guys think I'm gonna leave that now and test it on my better tuner uh, later as I've said with the video I can't get the decent video uh, tuner in frame so let's make do with this ooh that's sharp without a shadow of a doubt. So. Again, if it's sharp, the string's too short, so you need to move this back in order to make the string slightly longer. So, because uh, we're moving it back, again, I'll detune it a tad, so I don't risk breaking the string. And this was a fair amount, so I'm going to go to town on it. Uh, 
Right, let's have a look at this. See, bye. As I adjusted it, it nearly tuned it back up, which shows you how much it does change. Close enough. Oh, that's good. Hopefully that gives you a really good idea of how to adjust the intonation on your guitar. And I think that was a pretty good adjustment for considering the tuner. It's worth mentioning, however, I did check the uh, intonation afterwards on a more accurate tuner and it was really acceptable and the guitar sounded considerably better, especially when you played up the neck. So here's a very quick summary to uh, finish this video with. If the string is sharp at the 12th fret, then it's too short and it needs to be lengthened. And you do this by turning the screw clockwise. If the string is too flat at the 12th fret, then the string is too long and you need to shorten it. And you do this by turning the screw counterclockwise. Thank you for watching and if you enjoyed this video do subscribe and like and then you'll be notified when new videos are posted.